So here we are. It's part two of the Three Amigos. And I bet you're just uh, hanging on the edge of your seat. You just can't wait to hear what happens next. So here we go. Now, it's the final performance of the Three Amigos Celtic West Tour, which was held in the um, Agile in Dunoon, a hotel way past its best. A, a hotel with the decor of a 70s sitcom. Windows that refused to open without a grunt and a bit of oil. And floorboards with that uh, ghostly creak. And staff dressed like something out of an Agatha Christie novel. And is old. Elf Elsa had a vision. The same dyslexic vision that spelt Amigos with an O. Armed with walkie-talkies from the pound shop, the three Amigos were going to ambush the Argyle like an MI5 siege. We'll cut them off with no escape. Sensationalise them, she said. <laughs> well, not that the three Amigos heard. They were too busy sorting Randolph's hearing aid. The three amigos were a little late due to Kenny getting his dates mixed up. So by the time they were in position, most of the guests had left the um, Sir Walter Scott events room for the bar. Well, apart from the, a couple of sober drivers polishing off the rest of the Kipling cakes. Now, it was a room the size of a barn with a table so big you could skin a cat across it. And it was rammed against the bay windows with the curtains pulled across on account of the view of the truckers laid by out there in front. Kenny, sporting an extra large, you could eat your dinner off at sombrero, was in the first floor bedroom under the orders to sort of banister slide. Glenn, he was leathered up like Freddie Mercury's granddad. He was in the kitchen. And Cowboy Randolph was at the fire exit with spurs the size of a wheelbarrow and a cleaning trolley, trolley for cover. Elsa, Elsa scanned the Sir Walter Scott room, the Victorian curtains, the tables lizard with Tunnock's tea cake wrappers and thought, who the frick has tea cakes at a stripping drew? She sighed. They'll have to pull, all, pull out all their stops for this one, she thought. She headed into the bar. You in position, she hissed into a walkie-talkie. In position, yelled what she thought was the three of them. Elsa slid a walkie-talkie onto the bar and sort of leaned against it, looked out at the bored middle-aged crowd straight into the Sir Walter Scott's events room and thought, thank Kipling for our psychedelic Long Johns. She gestured to the barman, stroke owner, to turn on the music. The village people burst from the speakers. Macho, macho man. Leathered up, Glen, mid chip dipping in the kitchen, looked up. Randolph, the cowboy, he died from his cleaning trolley. And Kenny, well, he stuck his head out of the bedroom door and nearly tripped over his poncho. There she was, Rita, the woman that spurred him for the postman, strutting down that corridor like it was a red carpet, carpet entrance, and she was the main event. He slammed the door shut, rage building up, <coughs> building up inside him, spurring him to do something grander, something way better than a stair slide. He stared at the window, the bath towel scattered on the floor, and thought, I'll friggin' show you, Rita. Tying a couple of hand towels and a bath mat together, he hurled himself out the window and pendulum swung past the events window. He missed the ledge. Jesus. The driver stared out of the curtain window, at the curtain window. Kenny swung past again and scrabbled for the ledge and missed. Bollocks. The drivers made to open the curtain. Then they heard a crash from the fire exit. They raced to the exit to find Randolph in a crumbled heap, cursing his frigging spurs now caught in a J-cloth. Kenny swung again, thinking on his feet, or not as the case may be, and shouted, We are the three amigos, licensed to, and then he skidded with a bugger. Elsa looked towards the curtain windows of the Sir Walter Scott room, 
The barman stroke owner's eyes followed. They headed for the events room. The crowds clutching their drinks followed. Macho, macho man kept playing. They pulled open the curtains and a flash of sombrero swung past, lit up by the trucker's headlights, enjoying the show. The crowd gasped. Open the window, shouted a burly man with a dramatic sw arm swipe across a table like that. Crash went the Kipling cakes. Flutter went the Tarmox tea cake wrappers. I'll get the oil, shouted another who had worked in the hotel for years. Is that a bar mat? yelled the barman, stroked owner. Kenny swung past, caught sight of the crowd. He saw Elsa's, what the bollocking hell are you playing at face? The barman stroked new owners, are we insured for this face? And the crowd, is that a bar mat, bath mat face? And for a moment, he crumbled. Then he saw in the distance, Tia Maria in one hand, Postman in the other. I'll friggin' show her and him, he thought, pulling the best air splits. His trousers split, the crutch of his psychedelic long johns burst forth like an overstuffed suitcase. The truckers tooted. We are the best dust, dawn to dust troop, he yelled. He swung past. We are the three amigos, he swung past again. We are slices to thrill, chill and kill. The crowd cheered. The truckers blasted their horns. The barman, stroke new owner, opened the window and dragged Tenny across the table as Kenny was shouting, We shall seduce them in the beaches. Rita was gobsmacked. She'd heard of the three amigos, but she just thought it was all argyle exaggeration. Kenny jumped to his feet. He ripped off his poncho, his trousers, and he pulled his best Elvis the pelvis gyrate. My long johns are just the beginning, he shouted. On yourself, shouted a trucker. Rita dropped a tear to a tear Maria and the postie's hands. All those years, she thought. All those friggin' years. I'll be with a man who makes love like he's posting a letter. And I could have had him, but it was too late. Or was it? Well, that's part two. Next week's part three. Um, next time's part three. So I hope you enjoyed that. And um, till next time, happy reading.